Shalom, Rastafari, greetings. Okay, we're going to touch on just briefly this fifth uh, sabbatical. Let's put it up here. The RSS number five. Now, that was the most recent, the most recent Torah portion, or the fifth Torah portion, the fifth uh, reading in our annual cycle of Torah portion readings, readings and feedings from the Torah, which is a study for us of the Metaf Kedus of the Scriptures. Now, this Torah portion, and let's put this up here, this is known in the Hebrew as the Chaye Sarah or the high yay and high yay the we could say the life of Sarah now Sarah or Sarah is known as our Ethiopian Hebrew um matriarch now we can go to Galatians and we can read about the about the two covenants. There are two particular covenants that are spoken of in Galatians. One from Sarah, which is manifested in Yisachak and Isaac, and the other one from Arabia. So one is from Jerusalem, represented by Sarah, and the other is from Arabia, represented by Ishmael, and Ishmael, you might know, is the progenitor of the Arab. And now the Arabs and Islam and Judaism is a lot in the news. But in the Rastafari revelation, the teaching of His Majesty and the study of the Bible with the Holy Spirit and the and the true spirit of Rastafari, which we call, for lack of a better descriptor, but historically valid as the spirit of Ethiopianism, you understand, or this spirit in Revelation that we know as Rastafari reveals much concerning these two covenants. But this particular sabbatical portion, Bamarinya, in the Amharic is known as Ye Sa or Sha Aram Id, right, Id May, right, or Ye Saram, or really this is Nugusu Sa, so it would more be syllabated as a Sha or Sa, Sa Ram, and the, this part means and because it's in the portion the Metaf can do, so the Bible of His Majesty, and this is Id May. Now we could put that sound right there, but it has a, like a Hey, or some might write it like A, like Haye, Haye Sara, Haye Sara. Now, when we go to the scriptures, let's just go to the scriptures for a moment, and we go to the first portion of this particular reading, and this is concerning the death and the burial of Sara. And Sara was a hundred and seven and 20 years old so she was 120 she was 127 years old sara the our our mother sara is our mother she's symbolic of our mother you understand as beta israel and it says that and these were the years of the life of sara so this haye sara bamarinya Ye saram idme, ye sharam idme, actually means or can be interpreted within the Bible to mean the life of Sarah, the life of Sarah. Now, what is important about this right here, and we can study this from a couple of different perspectives. Now, as we mentioned before, we're seeking to produce. 
uh, a five-part book volume, and this is book one on the Bereshet, Bereshit, Bereshit, or Berasit, or Berasit, which is Genesis, the Hebrew book of Genesis, from some online compilations, which is intended to give one a basic overview, you understand, of the first portion of readings, from our Torah portion readings. Now, many of the references, some of our Wikipedia online, and just gives a basic outline of what are known as the Judaic or Jewish interpretations, the Hebraic and Judaic interpretations. Very important for us to get a groundation. We call this our Rastafari groundation. It's a sabbatical groundation so that we will know the glory of his imperial majesty, because majesty is from our part, our glory in the Bible. So to go through a more detail of the story, for example, in this particular book, we're now up to page 306, those who have been able to um, get a copy of it, and it's from the Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, and this is where we're beginning off in our studies, but as you can see, we're also studying the Met of Kedus of Negus and Negus. So, y'all willing, stay tuned and look forward to uh, society, line of Jewish society, uh, society of his majesty version of our own five-part series concerning the Met of Kedus. But first, we're going to deal with the English, you understand, and the so-called Western version, you understand, and seek to at least understand basically what it's about. As, uh, like we said, this is a basic groundation. You understand? And to trust and rely in the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, you understand, into the fullness of the revelation of Rastafari. Now, this particular portion, the Hebrew life of Sarah, is the first words of this kufu, or portion, it's the fifth weekly Torah portion in the annual Hebraic, and for us as Ethiopian Hebrew cycle of, of Orit, or Torah, Ethiopic Torah, the Orit, Nabab or Torah readings. It constitutes Genesis 21, 23, and 1. Genesis chapter 23, verse 1, to Genesis chapter 25 and 18. And we as Hebrews and, and other Jews and other Hebraics, we read this on the fifth Sabbath after the joy of Jalor, which is known as the Simchat Torah or Desita Orit, Orit Desita. Bamarinya. And this is generally read within the period of time, this particular um, period of, of, of time within the month of November, this particular season. Now we measure this, as we talked about it, from the lunar or the calculation of the heavens from God's calendar and God's orbit. So we stay in tune you understand, with his divine will as revealed here in the scriptures. Now, this gives a basic, a basic overview, but what I wanted to share just briefly here, just to catch up since we didn't publish this and do this recording due, doing, due to other um, matters which we were um, forced to deal with, you understand, during the sabbatical time and even rest, you know, because... The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So the Sabbath is a good time at the so-called end of the, quote, week to gain that divine strength. Even though we don't say weak, we say it's a strong. But the Sabbath strong is a time at the end of the week to gain our spiritual strength. Now, when we looked into um, the Schofield Study Bible, and it's at our website, www.lojsociety.org, a free download to be used in your computer, your tablet, or your iPod, or other computer type of device. This chapter, as we go into the chapter, there's a footnote here that we found to be very interesting, because they say that this entire, this entire um, chapter, as we go through the, 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 the first chapter, of the reading, chapter 23, and we get into chapter 24, it speaks about a bride for Yishak, a bride for Isaac, a bride for Isaac. And the entire chapter, they say, is, is highly typical. Abraham is a type of a certain king 
who would make a marriage for his son. Now, this is the very parable of our black Lord and Savior, Yehoshua HaMoshiach, where he spoke of the parable of the marriage for the son in chapter 22, verse 2 of Matthew, and then compare that with John chapter 6, verse 44. Now, secondly, there's an unnamed servant, and this unnamed servant is a type of the Memphis Kedus, or the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit who does not, quote, speak of himself. He doesn't speak of himself, but he takes of the things of the bridegroom with which to win the bride. Now, we need to understand this, this metaphor here and this crucial story that's found in this fifth sabbatical portion, our RSS Rastafari um, sabbatical study number five, the Haye Sarah or Ye Saram Idmei, the life of Sarah, we find the story of the bride for Isaac. Now, we need to understand this. This is the root of it, because as we go into the New Testament and we find the parable of Christ, the parable of Christ is properly overstood and interpreted in the context of the foundation or the Torah. You understand the groundation. The groundation is the, the foundation. Now, there's an unnamed servant type of the Holy Spirit who does not speak of himself but takes of the things of the bridegroom with which to what? Win the bride. So he takes of the things of the, the Holy Spirit, takes of the things of the bridegroom. Now, the bridegroom symbolically is Christos, or for us in Rastafari Revelation, is Christ and his kingly character. Takes of the things of Christ and his kingly character with which to win the bride, and the bride is the true church or the new church, which in Rastafari Revelation is the true, the faithful, and the mature Rastafari. The Rastafari represents that, that new church or that true church or the bride. Now, John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Now, the third matter is that the servant, a type of the menfes or the ruach, the spirit, as enriching the bride with the bridegroom's gifts. So if we are the bride as a Rastafari, and the bridegroom is Christ, even Christ in his kingly character. Therefore, the Holy Spirit now is seeking to enrich us with the bridegroom's gifts. And one of the bridegroom's gifts, of course, to us is the Metaf Kedus, is the Book of the Seven Seals, is the Amharic language, is our divine heritage, is our ancient Ethiopian, our ancient Ethiopian culture. You understand, which is our divine heritage. This enriches now. This is what enriches the bride, the Ethiopian Hebrews. We that once lost but now found, Beta Israel. This is what enriches us, according to um, verse uh, verse 22 of the chapter. Then we have First Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 11. Now, fourthly, the servant, a type of the spirit, as bringing the bridegroom to the meeting with the bride. So the servant here is a type of the spirit, the spirit of the truth of the good news, the gospel of his imperial majesty is what brings, brings the bride, the true Ethiopian Hebrew and the elect Rastafari to the meeting with the bridegroom, to the meeting with Christ in his kingly character in and through the spirit in and through the Spirit. This is why Christ would say, you do err, not knowing the Scriptures nor the power of God. Ones can talk about the power of God, this and that, but if it's not Scripture, if it's not according to the, to the, to the principle, you know what I'm saying, the principle, the spiritual, metaphysical principle of the Scripture, then it's not real, then it's an illusion, it's a delusion, it's a make-believe. You know what I'm saying? This is where we come into the gnosis or the gnosis or the science the metaphysical sciences here. Now, the servant, the type of spirit that's bringing the bride to the meeting of the bridegroom, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verse 4, and also Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verses 7, 6 and 7, Romans chapter 8, very important chapter, verse 11, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. Now, fifthly, we have Rebecca, Rebecca or Rebecca, is that bride, you know, saying for Yisahak, 
for Yisahak. Remember the scripture says, in Yisahak, or in Isaac, shall the seed be called. In Isaac shall the seed be called. This is why Sarah, our matriarch, and the template for our matriarch, Sarah, would say to kick out the bondmaid and her son, which represents, on one hand, Ishmael, and on the other hand, it represents Arabia. You understand? Know, to kick out the bondmaid and her son for will not be ear, will not be ear with my son, because this was a revelation to the matriarch. This is the revelation. So sisters also take note. There's much that the sisterhood, you understand, know, the sisterhood has to learn from these righteous and divine biblical matriarchs, sisters, daughters, mothers, as well as wives of scripture, just like we as the brethren have much to learn from the righteous brothers and, 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 and fathers and sons and, and husbands in the scripture. You understand? And also warnings from the negative examples as well. Now, here we have Rebecca, or Rebecca is a type of the church. She is a type of the church, or what's known as the ecclesia. The ecclesia. Now, the ecclesia is the called out. This is the original word for church. doesn't mean what you think it means nowadays in, in all these um, different um, 72 fragmented pieces, you understand, of the true Christ. But the church originally was the called out, ecclesia, ecclesia, the called out. It was the virgin bride of Christos. Pay careful attention. The virgin. What's up with a virgin? from one who is not a virgin. So this is the virgin, you understand, the virgin bride of Christ, Genesis uh, 24 and 16, 2 Corinthians 11 and 2, Ephesians 5, verses 25 to 32. Now, the sixth matter is that Yisahak is a type of the bridegroom, quote, whom not having seen, end quote, who did not see the bride, he did not see the bride, but he loves through the testimony. He has not seen the bride. We walk by faith, not by sight. He has not seen the bride, but he loves through the testimony of the what? The unnamed servant, who according to type here, is represented by the Memphis Caduce, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. First Peter 1 and 8. Now, the seventh matter is that Yisahak is a type of the bridegroom who goes out to meet. He goes out to meet and to receive or to Kabbalah, Kebaleh, to Kabbalah, to Kebaleh, his bride, to, to receive his bride. Now, we have this in Genesis uh, 24, this chapter, verse 63, 1 Thessalonians 4, verses uh, 14 to 16, verses 14 to 16. Now, we want to point to that because that is a very important foundation for this particular overstanding of Chaye Sarah, besides just the literal and what the story says, this and that, and she died, and this one, and that one married this one. But now as we begin to understand it or overstand it, we begin to see this, this, this spirit that runs through the scriptures that helps us to decipher and interpret the parables and also see our present-day relationship, you understand, in the context of the true word, of the glorious gospel of the King of Kings and his Christ. Now, as we go to chapter 25 and 25 and 18, 25 and 18, where Abraham, he weds Keturah, who some say was his Ethiopian wife. Isaac is heir of all things, proclaimed as being heir of all things, Yishak, and Sak means to laugh. He laughs, Yishak, um, and he said laughter does the heart good like medicine. You know, as Barana Salasi Bob Mali said, they have rumor, we have humor. You understand? So the, the, the key in the name, the meaning of the name is very significant. Now, the death of Abraham is next mentioned in chapter 25. 
and then the generations of Ishmael, and that's where we end. This particular Torah portion readings is with the generations of Ishmael. Now, Ishmael is the progenitor of the Arabs, and by extension, we have the Mohammedans or the Muslims. They're in the news nowadays. Now, we want to touch on Eleazar, but first we want to continue on Sada. So we're going to go to this point right here and just close out this particular um, review and, 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 and groundation, a brief groundation on this uh, Torah portion, where it says, as Sada stands for, quote, the mother of us all, Scripture teaches that Sada, the life of Sada, so who is Sada? Sada is the mother of us all, scripturally, biblically, according to the glory of his majesty. For my part, I glory in the Bible, saith Ketamawi, Haile Selassie. Haile Selassie the first, the last king of kings of Ethiopia. Revelation, prophecy fulfilled. So she is the mother, Sada is the mother of us all, that is, of those who by grace, not gracelessness, but by grace, are one with the true Son. Are one. Not two, but are one with the true Son. With the true Son of promise, of Tesla, of the hope, of the expectation, of whom Yisahak, he was a type, according to John chapter 3, verses 6 to 8, Galatians chapter 4, verses 26, verses 28, Verse 29, Galatians is a very important fact. We want to put that up here for you to check out um, Galatians in your, in your study if you haven't checked it out already. Go to Galatians chapter 4, right? Galatians chapter 4. Read the whole chapter, but make special emphasis of these verses right here. Chapter 28, 26, 28 and 29 of Galatians for a reference to Sada and to Sada's importance as the mother, as the mother of us all, of those who by grace, who are us, those who by grace are one with the true son of promise of whom Yisahak was a type. And also Hebrews chapter 2 verses 11 to verse 13. And also, we are joint heirs or co-heirs, co-inheritors of his wealth, of this Ethiopian Hebrew common wealth. So we are joint heirs, common joint heirs of his wealth, common wealth, Hebrew chapter 1, verse 2, Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. So, Keturah, 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 who is his Ethiopian wife, she's wedded after the full blessing of Yisahak. She's wedded now to Abraham after the full blessing has already come through now to Yisahak. Now some Keturah, that actually the Sheba line, the queen of Sheba's line or the Sabian line comes about, and we'll discuss that elsewhere, as we've discussed it already before, but that's a link with Keturah. You're saying Keturah, so Sheba was, in that sense, of Shem, or Shemitic, or Kamo, or Afro-Shemitic, the queen of Sheba, and the link now of her tribe is through Keturah, who was the third wife of Abraham after Sarah had passed on after the Haye Sara or Yesaram Idme. Now, Keturah and her children by Abraham may well stand for the fertility of Israel, the natural seed. This is what Sheba and those Ethiopians stood for, the fertility of Israel, the natural seed. And then it says right here, Jehovah's wife. This is a Schofield, the Schofield um, Reference Bible, Study Bible. Now it links Hosea chapter 2, verses 1 to verse 23. After, notice, after, so there's an order to this, not before, but after the full national restoration under the Palestinian covenant. 
under the Palestinian covenant. So we can now even go a little bit further and see the global kind of connections with what's going on and see the half of the story. We as the once lost but now found black sheep of the family who they have left out of the equation because it's a stone which the builders refuse has become the head of the corner. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 1 to 9 and there is a note there as well. So this is just a brief overview of what is known as the Haye, Haye uh, Sara. And we'll seek to address a little bit more of it, my brothers and sisters, y'all willing. So stay tuned. Shalom Rastafari. <laughs>